Hello, I'm Rachel from Dwensa Garden in Ireland and today's video is a tour of both my greenhouses. Now here in Ireland the weather has been more of a heat wave than we normally have. I think it was 26 degrees yesterday which is extremely hot for us and the result is that the gardens are frazzled. My lawn has begun to turn brown. It happened very suddenly. There had been a build-up I guess and then just suddenly within the space of a couple of days brown lawns, brown everything. Now for the greenhouse it is good in some ways and not so good in other ways. I've been damping down at least twice a day for the two greenhouses. Anyway Let's start off by having a look in my glass house here where I have my permanent collection and then after we've had a look at that and my planted up border in here we'll go and have a look in the other greenhouse where we'll get an update on the biennials I sowed and the lilies are propagated. Okay so let's get on with the video. And first up, take a look at this beautiful little hanging ornament I got from my daughter for my birthday. It kind of, it, it moves in the wind. Of course, there's no breeze in here. I had it out in the garden, but the wind kept blowing it down. Then we got the heat wave and it kind of stayed here in the greenhouse. But it's absolutely lovely. Okay, let's have a look at the plants. First up, we have my Ibervillea, which is this beautiful codex plant you see in front of you. So it's a succulent that has this amazing, amazing structure for just storing water in times of drought. And my goodness, it could be in its home place. It could be in Mexico or Texas at the moment, given the weather we've had here recently. Some yellow leaves, some green, and no sign of rotting, which is of course the desirable outcome. And behind Jessie, my Ibervillea, on this side of the glass house, we have my permanent pot collection, mostly succulents and cacti. And most of these are absolutely loving this kind of weather. This is a cactus called Astrophytum and it's well, it's becoming one of my favorites because I just love the shapes that it puts out. Of course, it doesn't have spines either, which is always a plus. By the way, were you wondering what the makeup brush was doing on the table? <laughs> if you follow the channel, you'll know I'm not a very makeup kind of person, but makeup brushes are so handy when it comes to removing cobwebs from cacti, for example, because you don't want to put your fingers in there and the brush will deal with that stuff without actually damaging the plant. Just don't use it on your face then afterwards. Over here we have Echeveria Compton Carousel, a favorite of many, including myself, and Rhodoxus. Now you may recall, I absolutely love these tiny little South African bulbs, but I guess I couldn't keep up with their watering needs and they have ceased flowering for this year, but the bulbs are intact and we still have green leaves in most cases. So I would be hopeful that next year they'll be back on form. The bottom shelf on the staging and here on the floor in front is mostly filled with South African bulbs and these are really enjoying the heat too. And right here at the top we have another pride of my collection and this is a large bulb of Buffon, another South African bulb that does fantastically. It doesn't flower very regularly for me but it doesn't need to. These leaves are just fantastic. And this here is my best flowering Hymanthus. It's called Humulus and it flowered again this year although I failed to catch it on camera. A large pink flower And moving over here to the left, we can see that two of my amaryllis are in flower at the moment and they are such pretty little things. So this is the true amaryllis, not the one that's commonly called amaryllis, but is actually hippiastrum, the one that's grown around Christmas time. This is not grown around Christmas time. It's one that, well, I guess it's more a greenhouse plant than a house plant. And this 
bulb here at the front or this flower spike here at the front is just going over as you can see but the one behind is as fresh as a daisy. So I'm not really concentrating today too much on the pot collection which has remained fairly stagnant. There's been a bit of potting on done and we'll see the evidence of that when we go into the working greenhouse, the other greenhouse. Um, the amaryllis, yes, they look great, but the real star of the show, the thing that's done so well for me this year is the border that I planted up permanently on this side of the greenhouse. So normally you have paving or some kind of floor on a greenhouse. If you grow vegetables, you might have raised beds. In my case, I have no paving all along this side of the greenhouse and I permanently planted it up with tender plants that require heat to survive in winter, ones that wouldn't do outdoors in Ireland. And the idea is that when I sit here with my cup of tea, it feels like I'm in some botanic gardens or some tropical garden somewhere. The plants, they're not as tall as they will eventually be, but already I'm really pleased with the effect they're giving and how they're progressing. Canna musifolia is doing great. Now, this is a canna that has leaves like a banana, like a musso, hence the name. And it started off, I guess, with a ropey start. There was a slug that got in and at some of the leaves as always happens and you end up with those telltale holes like you know the leaves have been punched because when they're wrapped up that's when the devil gets in there and punches its hole in and then when the leaf unfolds you've got a kind of a, a lace effect or a holy effect but they've done really well and I'm watering them quite a lot and they're doing really really super. And just to the right of the canna is this gorgeous solanum that I cut hard back in spring. And I'm so glad I did because it was getting too leggy, but now I just have giant, enormous leaves, which was the intention. It's what I really wanted. You may recall how I planted Tigridia bulbs in here in the border earlier on in the season. And they've grown, but no flowers as yet. I guess they're being shaded out because here is where south is and that's where the sun comes through. And we've got these leafy things in front of the Tigridia. So I guess there's too much shade for them to flower, which is a shame because my goodness, in this weather, you'd think everything would have enough sun. And down here we have two things that are looking, I suppose, a little the worst for wear. The first, of course, is this uh, Lobelia fistulosa, which is monocarpic. So after it flowers, it dies. That's why we have these flower heads here. It has branched, so I have had flowers coming out from the side. But generally speaking, the leaves start to look like really tatty and I've been removing them because, you know, that really isn't a good look. I'm actually waiting for it to set seed because my members will be offered fresh seed from this plant as part of memberships. But yeah, it's past its best buy. Now, the good news is that although it's monocarpic, it does seem to have sent out a basal shoot from the base, so I may get a second plant in there. I think it's round about time for me to cut this back. And speaking of cutting back, you'll see behind me also my Brugmansia. And this is Brugmansia sanguinea. And you probably saw the video earlier on this year where I talked about how I prune it. Prune it twice a year because it's just such a vigorous, vigorous plant. And I've come to the conclusion that this is too vigorous a plant to plant in the border of a greenhouse. The roots are extending far and wide and I'm afraid that they might undermine the foundations of the walls of the greenhouse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kill it off. So I've cut it back, leaving enough foliage to take the weed killer, but also enough foliage to do a bit of propagation because I will propagate it get a few plants going, try one outside, because this is a plant that really is quite cold hardy. And you will have seen the collaboration video I did with the guys down there in Australia. In certain parts of Australia, in Melbourne, for example, which seems to have a very similar climate to we have here in Ireland, they get away with this outdoors. So I'm going to try a cutting and try it outdoors. And then for the rest of the plant, I'm going to put weed killer on it because 
the roots have kind of gone in under the paving and I don't want to try and pull it out that I might do damage. I'll put weed killer on, leave it a season and then it should be easy to take out. And if you're not already subscribed to Stephen Ryan and Matthew Lucas's channel, then I highly recommend it. A great channel for anybody interested in gardening, especially if you have a little bit milder climate here, but they deal with all kinds of things that can be grown in a variety of places. Okay, I guess that's all I really want to show you in this glass house because we're going to head on over to the working greenhouse, which is just behind us now. The heat has meant that things that might normally have been in flower aren't in flower, so that's a bit of a shame. But I guess it will also mean that my succulents and my cacti will get a good boost, which will help them in other less rainy summers going forward. Before we head on into the greenhouse behind, I do want to show you one other thing, which is my Fercrea. I had a request from someone to show you my Fercrea. So let's go around to the front of the house. And here they are. Ta-da! This is a monocarpic plant that comes from Mexico and it's tender in my climate, which is why I've grown it in a pot. It's been in my greenhouse for the last 11 years. Yes, you heard me right, 11 years. And this year, the two of them together, because they're sister plants, decided to flower. Now you may wonder why the leaves are looking so mucky like that and the reason is that because it's a monocarpic plant after flowering it will die. Now as you can see this plant is currently producing both seed and bulbils. The seed is in those very large pods, not yet ripe because they haven't gone brown and cracked open. And the bulbils are little tiny plantlets that are producing themselves on the stems right beside the seed. I'm going to have lots and lots of baby plants. You'll notice a few changes in this working greenhouse since you were last here. Uh, and I don't mean this beautiful pot of petunias also a present for my birthday. I said to my son, go and get me something pretty from the garden center. So we did, he got me a pot of petunias. But what is new is some new furniture I've gotten. And the first is that potting bench over there, which I guess is a bit too small. So it's just that bit too narrow. I feel like things are going to fall off over the edge whenever I use it and I don't want to water things here because I'm afraid that they're going to drip into the drawers. The drawers are handy now but yeah so what I'm mostly doing is potting over here and here we have just kind of staging like wooden workbench type stuff that I bought and I'm just using this kind of tray on top of it because it just it's a little bit wider than the potting bench which is a shame but anyway it works. Over here I've been potting on various South African bulbs, cacti and succulents and I have two things to show you here. One of which is my Dioscoria. This here is one of my Dioscoria. Now you will recall that I grew these from seed four years ago. It's a codex plant. This in fact is the iconic codex plant, the elephant's foot, and they're very slow growing. So if I tell you that I sowed these seeds four years ago and I now have a two inch wide codex which I think is a really good result. Anyway I'm really happy with it. It's dormant at the moment or just gone dormant which is why those leaves above are withered. And the other thing I want to show you is this recently repotted Econopsis cactus and it has such an amazing flower spike coming. I've never actually seen this in flower in person so I am going to be out here first thing tomorrow morning to see this when it opens. And I have lots and lots of potted on biennials. These are the ones I sowed just a little while ago and look how well they're doing. These are just shooting up since I potted them on. This one here is the stock and look at the size of that plant already. 
just a couple of weeks that I took them out of the seed trays and put them into that and they just went woof. And so many, yeah, these ones here behind me are the wallflowers. Yeah, which one is that? That's Fire King. I'm gonna have so many beautiful orange scented wallflowers in spring and scented mauve double flowers in next year, next summer. What else have we got? We've got also the, oh yeah. <laughs> So these are the Sweet Williams, which were the last to germinate and took a while to get going. This is the little black one called Sooty. And since they got potted on, they really have put on a growth spurt. So that's just wonderful. And oh yeah, the hollyhocks. Let me show you the hollyhocks. Look at that. I'm going to put it in front of my face so you can see the size of it. Really, really big. So the hollyhocks seem to have a lesser germination rate than the other ones so I actually only sowed two hollyhock seeds per cell which was a mistake because well I less than half of those germinated but still I got about I got a good number of plants in the end so I'm happy enough and over here we have those lily bulbs, the tiger lilies that you saw me pot up last autumn. I have so many tiger lily bulbs. You know, you saw that video recently where I visited Siobhan's garden here in Wexford and she had a whole wall of tiger lilies. Now, I don't like to think of myself as a copycat, but you know, what the heck am I going to do with so many tiger lilies? It's got to be something absolutely amazing that I create with them. There are more down here. I just have so many of them. In terms of the lily propagation, I wanted to show you the results of the scaling, which is over here. Now, these are the lilies I propagated from scales and the ones at the back are the Asiatic ones, the dark one, which got going fairly quickly. And then the other one, which is Lilium speciosum, I kind of gave up hope on. And I then read somewhere that that was a particularly difficult one to propagate from scales. However, in the last couple of weeks, they have come through and there are some that aren't up yet, but the others are. So we're looking at potting those on and I should have Lilium speciosum to spare as well within a short period of time. And just another little seedling success I want to show you if I can lift it up. And this is one I did off camera, oops. It's actually <laughs> dripping water when I lift it up, so I'm gonna put it back because this is a bog plant that needs to sit in water. And it's a plant in the Gesneriad family that hails from Florida called Stenandrium. And I was kindly sent some seed from a viewer in Florida, so thank you very much. They have germinated, some of them more successfully than others. On this side, we've got very good germination and there, and then on this side, less so, but we'll give them a little bit more time. And then hopefully I'll have something else a little bit unusual in my greenhouse. And finally, we have tomatoes, and this has been such an amazing year for the tomatoes, the heat that's in it. I have so many, so many delicious, delicious tomatoes. Mm. You wouldn't believe how gorgeous they taste. So much better than anything that you can buy in a supermarket. I'm ripening so early. Normally in Ireland, you can expect tomatoes to ripen up, usually around about September, but we've had them, oh my goodness, all through August. Maybe even the end of July, which is just fantastic. Mmm, mmm. Pity you can't taste these, because my goodness, they're delicious. And I haven't been forgetting to water my grapevine either. Isn't it doing well? And now with the sun beginning to go in, that brings me to the end of this video, an update on my two greenhouses, which I hope you've enjoyed. And I hope you've enjoyed seeing follow-ups to some of the projects we've undertaken earlier. On Sunday, you can expect a short three minute video from me on my top three ornamental grasses for the garden. An absolute must if you want to add a bit of movement to a border. So do check that out. And then at this time next week on Thursday at 7 p.m. Irish time, you can expect a very special video. 
Hunting Brook Garden is in full flower in August and we're going to be there to experience all that colour and exuberance. We're also going to hear from Jimmy Blake himself. He's going to tell us about the new sand garden and the inspiration behind it. He's also going to let us in on a few little insights from when Monty Don from Gardener's World came to visit his garden and Jimmy went back to Long Meadow to visit Monty Don. And also Jimmy's going to tell us some of his top flowers of the moment. So a very special video that I'm sure you'll tune in to see. In the meantime, thanks as always for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye.